Hi, we are Engineering Brothers and just like my previous videos, I have got another circuit diagram over here and what is the ultimate aim? The ultimate aim is to find out the current through our load. Okay. Now, the basic part for this type of solutions are just like my previous videos, I have summarized the important or crucial steps over here. And after that, I will explain each part of the steps. And after that, I will do solve those solutions. And as per my promise, I don't want to skip any part of the solution over here as I have going I have shown you each and every steps which are essential for us okay so this is our circuit diagram is given and our problem statement is quite simple we are aiming to get the value for our short circuit current and for our equivalent resistance for Norton's over here okay and as you can sense that there is no load resistor is present in between our X and Y terminal. So quite frankly, this problem is not asking for any type of load current as the load current uh, load resistor is missing. And you can see that the XY terminal in between this XY terminal, there is no load resistor is present in between this important terminals or in between this plus minus terminals that is why it is not been required for us to find out the load resistor in between our x and y terminal all we need we just need to find out the short circuit current first and then the equivalent resistance for notons okay so let us first summarize our important or crucial steps which are essential for our Norton's theorem. So quite naturally if you do follow my previous videos which is a must always do remember that if you don't follow my previous videos you are not been able to understand the current solution over here. Okay so I always recommend recommend you about to find out my previous videos do share with your friends do follow that videos from time zero to maximum time which will give you the total picture regarding our solution statement or how do i solve those crucial problems over here okay so our first step is going to be our short circuit current which is i short circuit okay and how do you get that if you do follow my previous videos you will get my point but as per my promise, I want to show you the step by steps, steps over here. That is why I keep on saying the same thing over here, which is at the first step. But the procedure to solve the problem is different compared with any other problems over here. That is why I have chosen very interesting problems and these problems are very very essential not only for your semester exam it is very very essential for your competitive exam as well okay so our first step is always going to be our short circuit current and how do you get that just by short circuiting the xy terminal and in between this xy terminal the short circuit current is our main destination point. We need to find out the short circuit current in between our XY terminal. So this is our first step. And our next step is what? The next step is quite naturally our equal resistance for Norton's which is RINT. Okay. And we need to use this formulation if we do connect a voltage source of VDC in our XY terminal then we will get the current accordingly what what is the current for that condition the current is IDC I want to repeat this portion once again if you do connect a voltage source of magnitude VDC 
in our xy terminal you will get the idc current for that now after the analysis of this whole circuit or whole circuit diagram you will get the ratio of this vdc divided by idc and if you have formed this ratio you will ultimately get the equivalent resistance for nortons over here so ultimately you will get the equivalent resistance for nortons over here and as there is no requirement for our load current or what is the or how to get the load current value over here as the xy terminal is kept open so our equivalent circuit is not required for this solution okay so always keep it in your mind is that before you start your solution always try to understand the depth of this solution or uh, or depth of these problems and what are the important requirements that we are aiming to find out always keep it in your mind that if you don't understand the problem statement you will not been able to solve this type of problems okay so these two steps are essential for us to find out our short circuit current which is our first one and the next one is our equivalent resistance for nortons which is rint okay so let us start with our proceeding which is our short circuit current so our first step is our short circuit current and to do that as per my previous analogy or if you have followed my previous video you will understand that i am going to draw the circuit in a fresh way or in a bigger way that will be better for you to understand the circuit diagram okay so first we have got our 6 voltage voltage source is present which is this one so this is our 6 volt and along with this the 3 ohm resistor is present so this one is our 3 ohm and this is our 6 ohm okay and in our further right hand side of our circuit we have got the 2 ohm resistor is present and this is been connected with our simple current source which is of course dependent in nature as you can see that the 3i and what is the i the i is this one which is our i current is this one so if the current i small i is changing accordingly then the dependent current source value is also changing okay that is the definition of our dependent current source if you have missed my previous videos regarding dependent current source you can do follow that video as well okay so this one is xy terminal okay so this is our clear circuit over here now if we do consider that a point here at this node a if a voltage is present and if i do consider that the voltage is v and if i do consider that all the current is going away from our node a and as per our rule of thumb if you do follow my previous kcl analogies or if you have followed my previous videos regarding our nodal analysis you will get my point how do i take that but i don't want to repeat the same procedure once again if i consider that the left current is our i1 this one is our i2 the this current is i2 and this one is i3 now if you do apply the kcl at node a what is the equation the equation is as we have considered that all the current is going away from our node a what is the equation the equation is going to be i1 plus i2 plus i3 which is is equal to 0 okay and i have got one equation which is i2 is nothing but our small i okay so i am going to write it over here once again the another equation the i2 current 
which is equal to i as you can see that both the current have the same direction and it has the same path okay so i can take that equation as well now let us find out our first our i2 current so to do that i only do consider only this path only this path will be present and if i do have any expression which is i2 is equal to something in our right hand side that will bring us or that will give us the i2 expression over here so let us draw that circuit diagram first so this is our a and across this the voltage is v this is our a point okay and across this the voltage is v okay and a current of 6 ohm is present so this one is our 6 ohm and through this path the current is going to be our i2 so i have considered only this path so this is for our i2 current expressions okay now if you do apply the kvl in this closed loop what is the equation the equation is minus plus means plus b and as per the rule of thumb if you do consider is that the current is flowing from or flowing the in this way what is the polarity across this resistance this one is plus this one is minus so minus plus means plus v plus minus is minus 6 i2 which is equal to 0 okay now from this expression you will ultimately get the expression for our i2 and then we will put it over here so let us do that what is the expression for our i2 the i2 is v divided by 6 and let us put that over here v divided by 6 this one is plus this one is plus that i am going to use in our next step i am going to find out the i1 and i3 accordingly okay the time is off i want to give you two minutes to note down up to this one if you have any problems regarding our present problem or in our previous problem you can let us know in the comment section for better understanding and i can guarantee you that your concepts will be crystal clear after you do follow my videos okay so the time starts now
in our previous part of the problem we have got this is our kcl expression which we are trying to come out and i have only show you this i1 path over here and i have only applied the kvl through this path to get the answer which is what is the exact expression for our for our i2 i have shown you over here i want to repeat this portion once again i have only considered only this path and have separately drawn the circuit diagram over here and across this 6 ohm resistor the voltage is v okay now if you do apply the kvl in this closed loop what is the expression the expression is going to be this one and how do i get that minus plus means plus v and as the current has flown in this way this one is plus this one is minus and which is our preferred polarity across our resistor now if you do apply the kvl which is minus plus means plus v plus minus means minus 6 which is our resistance value multiplied with our preferred current value which is i2 which is equal to 0 so from this expression we will ultimately get the value for our i2 which is v divided by 6 now if i go further in our expression i am going to first come out with our i1 so let us do that so what is the expression for our i1 so to do that i want to erase this portion and i want to separately consider only the i1 path current over here just like my previous procedure so what is the i1 this one is our i1 okay and uh, if i do draw the circuit this is our point a and across this the voltage is our v okay now in our left hand side i am going to consider only this path okay what is the resistance here the resistance is 3 ohm and a voltage source of 6 volt is present so this is our 6 volt okay and as per our consideration here the current is i1 and as the current has flown in this way what is the polarity across our resistor the polarity is this one is plus this one is minus okay now if you do apply the kvl in this closed loop just the same procedure over here what is the equation the equation is going to be minus plus means plus v plus minus is minus 3 uh, which is our resistance value and what is the current value for our closed loop the current value is i1 plus minus means minus 6 which is equal to 0 so from this preferred expression you will ultimately get the value for our i1 which i am going to use it over here so after this step i am going to write the step over here which is minus 3 i1 which is nothing but if i do transfer this v and 6 in our right hand side i have got 6 minus v now if i do transfer the minus in our right hand side 3 i1 means v minus 6 or ultimately what is the expression or what is the equation for our i1 the i1 is quite definitely v minus 6 divided by 3 and i am going to put it over here the i1 which is v minus 6 divided by 3 i want to repeat this portion once again i have only considered the i1 path over here and separately considered or separately drawn over here and if i do apply the kvl in this closed loop what is the expression the expression is quite naturally minus plus minus plus v and as the current has flown in this way the polarity across the resistor will be this one is plus this one is minus so what is the voltage drop across that resistor which is resistor which is 3 multiplied with our current i1 and minus plus means plus v plus minus means minus 3 i1 and plus minus means minus 6 which is, is equal to 0 now if i do further rearrange over uh, this expression over here i have got the expression as i1 is equal to v minus 6 by 3 okay you can do consider the greater voltage lesser voltage method as well if you do follow my previous videos 
you will get that point what is the greater voltage lesser voltage method but i want to remind uh, you the method once again you can do take the shortcut method as well and how to get that shortcut method we do know that the current is always flowing from the greater voltage towards a lesser voltage approach so as the current direction is this one i have considered that the voltage at point a will be greater compared with this voltage source 6 volt voltage source of 6 volt now greater voltage means as the current has flown in this way at point a quite frankly or quite naturally the voltage is greater compared with the 6 volt so i have taken that one as v minus 6 divided by 3 okay i have considered the voltage at this point is greater compared with the 6 volt and this point is has the greater voltage potential this point has the lesser voltage potential and because of this difference of these two voltage which is v minus 6 divided by our resistance which is our the current which is flown through that preferred path which is 3 and for the i2 as well as the current has flown in this way at the ground level here this is our ground level at ground level the potential or the voltage is always zero so v which is our preferred voltage v minus 0 divided by 6 v minus grounded voltage which is absolutely zero so v minus 0 divided by 6 which is our current value for our uh, preferred value of i2 but as i don't want to skip any steps over here i need to show you each and every part of the solution and how do i get the exact expression for this preferred current over here okay that is why i always tell you that i never skip any steps of uh, uh, any step of any part of my solution over here and i am going to show you each and every part of my solution and how do i get this simplest or tiniest concepts over here okay so all i need from you i need a better support from you that is why i keep on saying you that no one is doing this type of videos over here and i am going to show you each and every part of the solutions over here if you have the patience to follow our videos you will absolutely get the confidence to crack any type of competitive exams and uh, you no longer do required to uh, pay any other uh, private companies or any other youtube channel uh to crack any type of competitive exams always do remind you that if you bring your confidence level back just by following my videos you will get my point what i am talking about okay now coming back towards our problem we have got uh, this is our and only one current path is missing which is our i3 so let us uh, do complete that one as well okay don't get scammed by this type of youtube channel or anything like that they are always uh, trying to gain some money okay but i am going to say that these concepts are very very essential for us and if you get have the understanding of this type of solution you will no longer do required to subscribe any other different channel just do follow our channel that is the main mantra over here and i am going to show you each and every part of the solution over here if you have any queries regarding of any part of a solution please let us know in the comment section for better understanding so i always try to say that if you have any problems regarding any part of the solution please let us know in the comment section as well okay and no one is to, um, no one is going to face this type of questions over here they are just making those videos over there they actually don't have the clear concepts okay but in our classes i am going to solve your all the preferred concepts over here you can challenge me by posting some challenging question as well i will try my level best to answer that um, answer that preferred questions as well okay so so now getting back to our problem for our next current path which is our i3 i have already written and let us draw the circuit diagram for that 
as per my analogy i want to separately consider the i3 car i3 current path over here okay and i only do consider only this path okay and as here the circuit is open circuited which we should close that because we are aiming to find out our short circuit current which is i short circuit so here the current is our i short circuit now if you tell me about that why don't i do short circuit this xy path because all things are concepts i have seamlessly find out the i2 and i1 current over here and while i do follow the i only do follow this path i have shown you that why do i close this path because we do require the short circuit current that is why we have short circuited short circuited the xy terminal and we have got the current through the short circuit path is i short circuit now i can do apply the i3 current over here if you kept open this terminal as open then there is not a possibility to make any sort of entry in our current element over here as this one is open circuited so no current should be flown in this way that is why i have considered after many time i have short circuited this path and this current is been called as short circuit path okay now i should uh, draw the circuit over here at point a what is the voltage the voltage is v okay and through this path the resistor is 2 ohm over here i want to give you 2 minutes to note down after this one and after that i will do show you how to get the current value for our i3 over here okay so the time starts now
in our previous part of the analogy we have shown you that for the separate current path we have considered separate circuit diagram over here and i have show, shown you how to get the values of this current i1 small i1 small i2 over here now let us move towards our next current path which is our i3 okay and i have given you a crucial point in our previous part is after i have connected the xy terminal or after i have short circuited the xy terminal and as you can understand that in between these two paths the short circuit current current is flown and because of the short circuit path we can say that a particular current of i3 is flown through our 2 ohm resistor and because of the short circuit path i have shown you that the i3 current will be flowing in this way that is why i have considered the short circuit path after a very after uh, the latter part of our solution okay while analyzing the i3 current i have just uh, closed uh, or short circuited the xy terminal and i have considered that the current through this path is a short circuit current path and uh, now let us do draw, draw the circuit to get the value for our current i3 so i have already started the circuit diagram across this voltage drop i have got the voltage across our node a is b and i have already drawn that and if you can understand that the that i will only consider the i3 current over here this is our 2 ohm resistor is placed uh, over here and uh, as you can see that this part is short circuited the voltage across this path is zero so as there is no element is present in point in this point and in this point so i can write that i will get the short circuit path already i want to repeat this portion once again what as you can see that no element is present in point x and this point then i can say that the voltage here which is nothing but the voltage is, is equal to zero because of the short circuit current and voltage in this point will be always zero so i can draw the circuit in this way okay now if you do apply the kvl in this loop and consider that the current through this path is our i3 here you can see that as i have promised you or i have said to you is that the current is our i3 so this is our current i3 and what is the rule of thumb if you do consider the current has flown in this way what is the polarity the polarity is this one uh, the left hand side is plus this one is minus which is the preferred polarity across our resistor okay now if you do apply the kvl in this closed loop what is the equation the equation is i am going going to erase this portion as i have already completed the i1 current in our previous step okay now what is the value for our this one is closed okay um, and this one is our register okay now if you do apply the kvl in this closed loop what is the equation the equation is minus plus means plus v i will consider the current i3 not the i short circuit why because in our equation the i3 current is present that is why i only consider the i3 current why do you consider that sort of expressions and how to come how to come or how to analyze those current and voltage equations that are very very important for us that is why we should consider the current of i3 in our closed loop now if you do apply the kvl in this closed loop what is the equation we have got two voltage drop are present uh, in our closed loop which is this voltage the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor and for this short circuit path we do know that the because of the short circuit path the voltage will be zero so there is no voltage drop in between our xy terminal and only two voltage drops are present and summation of these two voltage drops are nothing but the zero which is our kvl expression so let us do construct that so minus plus means plus v plus minus means minus what is the value for our resistance the resistance is 2 multiplied with i3 which is, is equal to zero now if you go if you want to rearrange this one which is 2 i3 which is v and 
finally the i3 is nothing but v divided by 2 and let us put that in our expression v divided by 2 is which is equal to 0 okay if you have any confusion i want to repeat this portion as this one is initially open circuited i have short circuited that part as we are aim to find out the short circuit current over here and while finding out the i3 current i have just short circuited because to form the i3 current over here and i have shown you just by applying our or just by considering our closed circuit and after that i have applied the kvl in this expression and finally we have got the complete kcl expression which is nothing but the this equation now if you do solve this equation you will get the value at what is the voltage at point a so let us do that so what is the lcm for this this one is 3 6 and this one is 2 okay now if you do say this one is 3 this one is 1 this one is 2 this one is 2 and ultimately because of this 2 i have got 1 1 so what is the lcm the lcm is 6 okay now what is the solution process this one is 6 this one is 2v minus 12 this one is plus v this one is plus 3v which is equal to 0 okay now we just do require to rearrange this expression what is that the this one is our 2 4 this one is 3 plus 1 means 4 4 plus 2 means 6 okay and this 6 multiplied to 0 means 0 so the expression will be 6v which is equal to 12 if i do transfer the minus 12 in our right hand side okay ultimately what is the final value for our v the v is 12 divided by 6 and what is the value the value is 2 volt okay now let us note down the value over here what is the value for our voltage at node a the voltage at node a is our if i do consider the voltage at node a as v a which is what is the value the value is our 2 volt okay now let us consider that at this point the node is been considered as node b okay i have got the voltage at this point now we just need to find out the i3 so what is the value for our i3 as per our equation the i3 is this one and why do i consider the i3 i will tell you in a very shorter note but before i go into that i want to erase this portion as this will take huge amount of space but i before i wrap this or clean up this thing i have applied the kcl at node a and have constructed each and individual current over here and after solving this expression i have got the voltage at node a is nothing but the 2 volt okay now let us do continue our solution procedure over here now i have got a very crucial expression which is i2 current is nothing but the i current which i have shown in our previous part over here okay our i2 current is i which has the value of v divided by 6 this one okay this relation will help us to solve this circuitry problems in a more efficient way now if you do apply the same kcl expression at node v okay so kcl at node v what is the expression this current is making an entry this current is also making an entry and this one is leaving okay so ultimately i have got i3 plus 
थ्री आई आई थ्री प्लस थ्री आई एस दीज टू करेंट्स आर मेकिंग एन एंट्री व्हिच इज नथिंग बट आवर टोटल शॉर्ट सर्किट करेंट नाउ इफ यू डू सॉल्व दिस इक्वेशन यू विल अल्टीमेटली गेट द शॉर्ट सर्किट करेंट ओवर हियर ओके बट आई वांट टू गिव यू टू मिनिट्स टू नोट डाउन अप टू दिस वन एंड आफ्टर दैट आई विल do use or by using this equation i will get the final value for our short circuit current which is our first step of our solution okay hope you have understood our total analogy over here if you still have any doubts please let us know in the comment section for better understanding the time starts now in our previous step after we have applied the kcl at node b we have got this is our expression that is why i have not erased the value for our i2 which is nothing but the i okay i from our given solution 
which has the value of V divided by 6. Okay. And we have already got the value of voltage V, which is nothing but the voltage at VA, the same expression. I have, I have taken this one as, as node A. That is why I have taken at that one as V. Okay. So, if you do put the value of V of our, sorry, of our voltage V, we have got the current expression over here. Okay. Now, let us find out that one. Okay. That is why I have never erased the expression for our current small i and the current i3, which you can understand that is present in our given KCL expression. So let us find out or put the value for our V, which is 2 divided by 6. And what is the value? The value is 1 by 3 and the unit is amps. Okay. So the I2 value is nothing but which is equal with our small i, which is nothing but the value is 1 by 3 amps. Okay. Similarly, for our I3, I3 is what is the expression for our I3? I3 is V divided by 2. Now, if you do put the value of this voltage V, we have got 2 divided by 2, which means the value is 1 amps. So, the I3 is 1 amps and the I2 or I small i is nothing but the 1 by 3 amps. Now, let us do put the value in our KCL expression that will give us the ultimate value for our short circuit current expression. Okay. So, I will take the I short circuit in our left hand side. So, what is the I3? The I3 is 1. So, 1 plus this one is our what is the value for our small i? The small i is 1 by 3. So, 3 multiplied with 1 by 3. So, these 3, 3 will cancel each other. And what is the value for our short circuit current? The value for our short circuit current is 2 amps. Okay. Now, let us do fill up our block in our right hand side. What is the value for our short circuit current? The value is 2 amps. Okay. I want to repeat this portion once again. In our previous analogy, we have find out the current expressions over here. And what is the current expression we have got? The current expression for small i2, which is nothing but, which is easy, which is equal to with our small i, which is the value is 1 by 3 amps. And for our i3, we have got the value is 1 amps. And I have used the, this in our KCL expression to get the short circuit current, which is 2 amps. Okay. And I have fill, filled up the block over here. Okay. So, in our next step, we will find out the equivalent resistance which we are need to incorporate over here and what is the solution or what is the problem statement over here. Uh, the problem statement is quite naturally very simple. So, we need to switch towards our next step which is our equivalent resistance for Norton. So, what is the expression over here? So, the formulation will be this one. So, I have got this one is our RINT. Now, we should switch towards our equal resistance for Nortons, which is our next destination point over here. You have understood my total analogy over here. If you still have any doubts, please let us know in the comment section for better understanding. So, let us do switch towards our equivalent resistance for Nortons. Okay. I think I have cleared all those points. If you still have any doubts, please let us ask vital questions to clear your doubts. Now, we should move towards our second step, which is our equivalent resistance for Nortons. So, what is that? I am going to use this formulation Y as we need to deactivate our independent voltage source which is this one now if you do apply a particular voltage in between this xy terminal let us do include that in our consideration if i do include a voltage source of vdc in our given circuit diagram and because of this VDC or because of this voltage source of the magnitude of VDC, a current IDC will be flown in our circuit and 
we should deactivate our voltage source over here so if you do deactivate our independent voltage source that path is short circuited so the circuit is look like this one and i want to repeat this portion once again i just need to use this formulation which actually gives us the equivalent resistance for nortons which is vdc divided by idc okay so from this expression we will need to find out the exact expressions for our equivalent resistance for nortons that is why we have connected the vdc at the open circuit terminal and because of this vdc a particular current of idc is flown in this way okay now similarly for the same procedure we have got if i do consider that a particular voltage of v is present at node a now if you do apply the same kcl expressions over here what is the equation the equation is i1 plus i2 plus i3 which is equal to zero now you have a very vital question over here you can ask me that i am going to use the same expression no that is not the same expression in our same in our previous expression this independent voltage source is present there and as we have used the vdc formulation we just need to deactivate our voltage source that is why after deactivation of our voltage source the 6 volt instead of considering this as 6 volt we should use the short circuit path at the condition or at the at the position of this 6 volt okay so this equation is going to be different compared with our previous expression okay now let us do complete that as well now for this analogy i am going to use different procedure in our previous step i have used the each and individual current path in this path i am going to use the greater voltage lesser voltage method for this current i1 as i have considered that the voltage is v at the ground level so through this path the current is i1 at the ground the voltage is zero so greater voltage means our v lesser voltage means our zero divided by three which actually gives us the exact value for our current i1 okay now the next step is our i2 the current through this path the same analogy here at point a the voltage is greater here the voltage is zero b voltage difference which is v minus zero what is the resistance through this path the resistance is six and ultimately the final one which is what at this point now as we have connected the vdc at this point b the voltage will be vdc okay and here the point is v and as the current has flown in this way greater voltage which is v minus lesser voltage which means vdc divided by what is the resistance the resistance is 2 which is equal to 0 the time is up i want to give you two minutes to note down up to this one and after that i will do analyze that or i will refresh your mind once again how to find out or how to understand these kcl expressions over here okay the time starts now
so from our previous analogy or for our previous kcl expression we have applied the kcl uh, and we have got three current elements are present now you have asked me a very important question is that you our previous for our short circuit current analogy we have used the same circuit but i want to remind you once again what is the method to connect this voltage source if you want to connect the voltage source as vdc we just need to remove our all the other sources that is why we have just removed the 6 volt volt 6 volt voltage source from our circuit diagram and instead of considering that a short circuit path is present over there so our previous analogy and this analogy is different and i want to remind you is that the i1 current is this one and how do i get that or what is the exact way to find out at the ground level here the voltage is zero you can see that so the current is flowing in this way okay now i have used different method to find out the kcl expressions over here what is that i have used greater voltage lesser voltage method so as the current has flown in this way you can understand that at point a the voltage is say consider that the voltage is v at point a and at this level the voltage is zero you can understand that the current is flowing in this way and it is been going towards our ground so by using this analogy or by using this greater voltage lesser voltage analogy we have used the formulation over here which is v minus 0 divided by 3 which is a resistance value the next one is the same procedure but i want to consider only this path okay so v minus 0 divided by 6 which is our i2 and finally i want to say that this voltage this point voltage and this point voltage are same as you can understand that there is not a single element is present in between these two points not a resistor is present in between these two circuits that is why i can say that at this point the voltage is vdc and at this point also the voltage is vdc and we do know that what is the current expression voltage difference divided by or voltage difference divided by our resistance for our path so what is the voltage difference in between this a and b point i have considered that at point b the voltage is vdc because of this vdc voltage source okay now as the current has flown in this way i have considered that or i have taken that the voltage at point a is v so v minus vdc divided by 2 which is equal to 0 now we just need to simplify this expression over here so what is that i have got v by 3 plus v by 6 plus v minus vdc divided by 2 which is equal to 0 we just do require to simplify this expression so we need to find out first the lcm the lcm is 3 6 and 2 now if i do take this one is 3 this one is 1 this one is 2 this one is 2 one second 2 means 1 1 1 3 multiplied 2 means the lcm is 6 so this one is 6 this one is 2v plus v plus 3v minus 3vdc which is is equal to 0 okay now we do require to simplify this expression further what is that so 6 multiplied with 0 means 0 okay now these are our v's uh, this one is 2v this one is v this one is 3v so 3 this one is 4v 6v so ultimately we have got 6v which is equal to 3vdc if i do transfer that 3vdc in our right hand side we have got this one which is 6v which is equal to 3vdc now <coughs> we just do require to simplify this one v means 3 by 2 vdc not 3 by 2 3 by 6 3 by 6 vdc 
and this one is half. So B means half BDC. Or I can say that B is ultimately 0 0.5 BDC. This relation is very, very useful for us. That, uh, that is why I have noted down over here. Okay. Now, we just need to form the VDC divided by IDC. And what is the exact step to do that? Let us do follow our process. So, first I have applied the KCL at node A and I have got a relation which is V is equal to 0 0.5 VDC. Now, you can tell me about that. What is the exact way to find out our VDC divided by IDC? To do that, I just need to use at node B, what is the formulation? So let us do that. Okay, I want to understand or need to note down another one, which is I means B divided by 6 as per our analogy. I means B divided by 6. Okay, which is helpful over here. If I do apply the KCL over here, so you can understand that 3i is present and i3 is always present. So I should note down the i3 as well. So what is the i3? The i3 is b minus vdc divided by 2. b minus vdc divided by our 2. Okay. If I do apply the KCL at node v, I have got three parameters. First idc, then 3i and then the I3 current. That is why I have specially noted down the voltage of small i and I3. This current is no longer required. That is why we do not need to understand or do not need to recover that expressions over here. So let us do complete our solution. Okay. This one is 3 ohm. I have accidentally erased that. Now, if you do apply the KCL at B, what is the equation? The equation is this current is making an ent entry, which is I3. This one is also making an entry. And here, this one is making an entry. Okay. So, all the current elements are added. That is our KCL expression. So, if I do apply the KCL, apply KCL at B. What is that? First current element is I3. The next one is plus 3I. And ultimately, I have got the final one, which is plus IDC. which is equal to 0. This one is I3, this one is 3I and this one is IDC. Okay. Now let us do put the expressions over here. I have got the I3 expression which is V minus VDC divided by 2. So instead of considering or writing it as I3, I should replace the value with this one. Okay. So what is the value? The value is going to be B minus VDC divided by 2. I have replaced the value of I3. The next one is plus 3. I means V divided by 6. B divided by 6 plus IDC which is equal to 0. Okay. Now these 3 and 6 will cancel in our expression and 2 will be present. B minus BDC divided by 2 plus V by 2 plus IDC which is equal to 0. Okay. Now we have got our expression for our B which is 0 0.5 BDC. But before I go into that I want to give you another 2 minutes to note down up to this one and after that finally I will get the equivalent resistance over here. I have been presented you the total way 
or the total package to solve any type of circuit theory problems over here that is why you can support me just by clicking the like button okay and hit the bell icon for more updates and of course please do subscribe our channel because no one is doing this type of videos over here and i want to tell you that i have the ability to solve this type of largest problem over here and not only this is our vital point the vital point is your concepts will be clearer and you will have the confidence to solve this type of problems by your own way okay so the time starts now in our previous part of the video if i do apply the kcl at node a after we have solved those kcl equation we have got this is our important or most crucial expressions over here now if i do apply the kcl at node b we have got this is our expression over here and you can understand that from this expression we will ultimately get this ratio or need to form this ratio which is BDC divided by IDC. Okay. 
now let us do find out our rest of the solution in our last step we have got the v minus vdc by 2 plus this one over here and i have put the value of i3 and 3i in our preferred expression and we have got this is our all the expressions are given over here now to complete our rest of the solution i just need to erase our upper two steps that will be better for us to have some extra space to complete our solution after this step i will use this one now instead of writing this as v i will replace that with this 0.5 vdc so v means actually 0.5 vdc which is nothing but the v i want to repeat this portion once again i have replaced the v and the v is is equal to 0.5 vdc so i have replaced that with the value so 0.5 vdc minus vdc divided by 2 plus we have got the v which is nothing but the 0.5 vdc so 0.5 vdc divided by 2 plus idc which is equal to 0 okay now i want to repeat this portion once again as this portion is very very crucial for this solution okay this is our last equation that we have got now if you do put the value of v which is what the v is 0.5 vdc so if i do replace this value with 0.5 vdc we have got this is our equation now minus vdc plus 0.5 vdc means or minus 0.5 vdc divided by 2 plus 0.5 vdc by 2 plus idc which is equal to 0 okay this means minus 0.5 vdc as this one is 1 this one be, this one is been considered as 1 which is vdc minus 1 so minus 1 plus 0.5 means minus 0.5 okay now so these two expression will cancel each other and finally i have got the idc so finally i have got the expression as idc is equal to 0 okay now if i do put the value of this idc in our final expression which is this one so vdc divided by 0 is ultimately give us the answer as infinity and the unit is ohm okay so i need to blank off or need to write in our blank portion over here here which is infinity and the unit is ohm so this is our complete picture or complete solution over here if you still have any doubts please let us know in the comment section for better understanding i want to repeat this portion once again if i do apply the kcl at node a we have got this is our expression over here if i do consider the same approach if i do apply the kcl at node v i have got this is our expression so instead of considering this as v i will replace this with 0.5 vdc and i have written over here and ultimately we have got these two expressions are cancelled each other and finally i have got the idc is equal to zero now if i do apply the or do put the value of this idc is equal to zero in our preferred expression which actually give us the equivalent resistance for nortons i will ultimately get the value for our equivalent resistance which is infinity ohm okay i think or i do believe that i have shown you each and every steps over here that is the best part of our of our channel as you can understand that after you have followed my videos from time zero to maximum time you will get the 
you will get all the concepts clearer and you no longer do require to find out any type of competitive exam type solutions or there are a lot of youtube channels are there they always give you the false bet of sense or false identity is that they are always spread you that this type of videos are uh, very very tough and uh, this type of problems are very very tougher but i i need to say that these type of solutions are not very tough the toughness is you don't understand the concept so if you do clear your concepts then you can do this type of solutions by your own hand and my challenge is to always do solve this type of solutions and i no longer want to shorten my steps over here i am going to show you each and every steps over here so please do subscribe our channel because no one is doing this type of videos and i am going to show you each and every steps that will be better for you or better in terms of conceptual ways okay so finally i have cleared your doubt do like share and of course subscribe our videos and so that's it thank you and goodbye
if you like my video so what are you waiting for please do subscribe my channel hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned to the channel thank you and goodbye